I'm Sasha Ann Simons, and this is Reset. Trump or Harris, who is it going to be? The answer will have a big impact on life here in the Chicago region, of course. This hour, we're taking a look at how a Trump or Harris presidency could touch three issues important to people in our area. Later, it's housing. The nation is dealing with a housing shortage, high home prices and skyrocketing rents. We'll examine what each candidate's plans mean for Chicagoland. Then we'll tackle the environment, climate change, energy policy, lead pipes. We'll cover it all. We start, though, with an issue that's become a lightning rod in this campaign and one that has real life consequences, immigration. Harris has leaned into tougher border policies. Do not come. Do not come. I will take further action to keep the border closed between ports of entry. Those who cross our borders unlawfully will be apprehended and removed and barred from re-entering for five years. And Trump is making false claims about immigrants and using racist language at rallies and on the debate stage. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world. And every time I come up and talk about what they've done to our country, I get angrier and angrier. First time I've ever said garbage can, but you know what? It's a very accurate description. Here to discuss how a Trump or Harris presidency could affect life for immigrants here in the Chicago area is Ere Rendon, Vice President of Immigrant Justice for the Resurrection Project. Good to see you again, Ere. Hi, thank you for having me. Also here in studio is Antonio Gutierrez, who is the Strategic Director for Organized Communities Against Deportation. Good to have you here, Antonio. Thank you for having me. And Lawrence Benito is Executive Director of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Welcome, Lawrence. Glad to be here. So uh, very disturbing clips there that we just we just played. Uh, the language that's being used, the rhetoric just around the topic of immigration in this country, it's, it's very triggering for a lot of people. The racism is just showing, right? It, it's just out there. I couldn't uh, you know, open my phone this morning without scrolling past just a lot of clips of recent rallies and just things that have been said by guests at these rallies, the presidential candidates themselves. How is it for you all, though, hearing these things, watching these things? Eddie, you first. I mean, I think since um, Trump came down the escalators um, so many years ago talking about um, Mexicans being rapists, um, and Mexico not sending their best. Um, you know, we've it's things that we've been dealing with um, and that you sort of have to get tough on um, and not allow it to affect you. I think um, what we've been able to do, I think because of many of the organizations that are here in Illinois and in Chicago, um, is protect the immigrants that are here um, and try to expand uh, opportunities for immigrants that are here um, and, you know, really focus on that. Yeah. Your thoughts, Antonio? <clears throat> I think for me, as an undocumented person, I've been living in Chicago for 25 years. Um, it really is disheartening to hear uh, the language coming from both candidates. Uh, and when I hear Trump saying that we're poisoning or immigrants are poisoning the American blood, it makes me think, right, that like all what he's talking about is that we're a threat to the white supremacist project that immigration, that our immigration system is based on. Uh, and so that's what I hear when I hear all these rhetorics and narratives uh, from both sides of the election. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence, what about you? When you hear, you know, Kamala Harris say, don't come, or you hear Trump talk, you know, make reference to garbage cans when discussing immigrants, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I was just texting with some friends this morning about if they ever visited the Philippines, would they describe some parts of the Philippines as, you know, a floating uh, island of garbage, you know, too, right? You, you can't think of you know, personalizing these things. And, you know, on one hand, you know, you, you try to just tune those things out, but words matter, right? Um, and, you know, real damage can be, you know, made from some of the, the language and the rhetoric that's that's being used right now. Yeah. So th for the remainder of this conversation, we'll focus first on Republican Donald Trump. Then we'll get to Democrat Kamala Harris later in the conversation. So Trump has said that he would institute the largest mass deportations of undocumented immigrants in the country's history if he were elected, and that he would employ the military to do so. Just mentioned, uh, Antonio, you yourself are an undocumented immigrant. Uh, what's your reaction to that? 
Yeah. Um, I think the reaction that we're seeing in our communities uh, that are undocumented is fear, right? And we had fear back in 2016 when the election happened. Uh, and then after the results, we self-organized and we empower one another and we kept each other safe. But we saw during the, the Trump administration a lot of attacks of terrorism uh, to our communities, our immigrant communities. People were afraid of leaving their homes. Many people self-deported, uh, and that's what I'm afraid of. I have a lot of fear for my community for what is yet to come in the next four years. And to be honest, like I don't know if we can survive another Trump administration. Not only is he coming with an understanding of how uh, he can have a lot of power as the executive branch, uh, but also there's a lot of less uh, uh, balances or things that could prevent him from doing many of the things that he promised during his first election campaign uh, and that now he has the power to really do even this aspect of like, regardless of what his actions are, he cannot be criminalized. Uh, what undocumented right. people are criminalized as soon as they cross the border, regardless of how they were entering the, the, the country. Lawrence, your thoughts on, on Trump's mass deportations plan? Well, there's no way that he can do it without cooperation from local law enforcement. And so that's why, uh, as an organization, we've really, you know, pushed to, you know, separate uh, the cooperation between local law enforcement and uh, federal agencies. And we're going to continue to try to fight to limit uh, the interactions between local and, and national, uh, you know, policing uh, so that, you know, local police are focused truly on, you know, community safety yeah. versus being, you know, deputies of the federal government. At a, the National Foundation for American Policy has estimated that 2.7 million people will lose protection from deportation if safeguards like temporary protected status or TPS and deferred action for childhood arrivals or DACA if they're allowed to expire. How are you talking about that possibility with community members? Yeah, I think that that's very real, regardless of whether um, you know a Trump administration could execute mass deportations or not. Um, I think we're definitely prepared that he would, um, you know, get rid of TPS for the folks that have have TPS from designated countries. Uh, definitely trying to get rid of DACA, which he did in his first. He also attempted in his first term. Um, I think we were very aware of the shift in um, all of the courts up and down. Um, in every single uh, jurisdiction, and so we're very worried about uh, losing, um, you know, in the court system. Um, and then also, um, you know, there's been about 1.4 million new immigrants that have arrived under a program called parole. Parole is not being renewed, and so it is expected that those folks apply either for asylum or maybe they qualify because they have family members mm -hmm. um, who are U.S. citizens. And for folks that are going to lose a parole as well, those are probably going to be the easiest targets given that they've been in the U.S. for less than two years and there's this thing called expedited removal. Um, and so I think for us it's making sure that people know what their rights are, um, making sure that we are uh, to what Lauren said, making sure that we're making sh that the current – that local uh, law enforcement is not cooperating with ICE yeah. um, and making sure that as many attorney generals are on our side um, and are um, also taking this in the court system. Yeah, I mean, you uh, if Donald Trump wins, your group at the Resurrection Project, uh, you're planning to go on the defensive and pivot your, your operations, which is currently, you know, running legal clinics to help people submit their TPS applications. Mm -hmm you're instead going to take on deportation cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have set up an infrastructure through the you know, Chicago Legal Protection Fund, through the Illinois Access to Justice Program, through the Immigrant Legal Services Program as well, um, that has, a, you know, that is able to both assist immigrants who do qualify for protections or for um, immigration relief, um, but we, this is the same infrastructure that can be used to take on deportation cases um, that can work with our community navigators across the state to make sure that we are, are providing the attorneys, but we're also providing the community support to make sure that we're stopping as many deportations as possible. Antonio, how's your group organized communities against deportations? How are you preparing for the possibility of mass deportations? Tell yeah. us more. No, we, we started the organization. Uh, to stop deportations. We've been doing that work for 12 years here in the city of Chicago, and we'll continue to do it, right? We anticipate 
that out of the 50,000 immigrants or migrants that we have received here in Chicago alone in the last two years, only a very small percentage of them will actually get their asylums approved. So they're going to be placed in removal proceedings, right? And regardless of what type of status or whether people have been able to receive a work permit, they're ultimately still in removal proceedings. And people need to understand that, that regardless of who is going to be the president, we're going to see down the road, maybe a year or two or even more, uh, a, a huge increase of deportations. And so yeah. we're preparing to activate the defense networks at the neighborhood level, the rapid responses that were activated during the Trump or the first term of the, the Trump administration. Uh, and we're going to continue to do know your rights information because we believe that it's important for people to know what are their rights when they come into contact with the local police right. or with ICE agents. And, and that's the best way to sometimes to prevent deportation. Lawrence, because of organizing at the state level in Illinois, we've got many protections here for, for immigrants. Walk us through a, a few of them and, and, and how they could work in practice under a Trump presidency. Sure. So one of the, the most common way people get into the uh, interaction or uh, system uh, is through a routine traffic stop, right? And so that's why we worked very hard to ensure that uh, driver's licenses, regular driver's licenses were uh, available for anyone. Uh, we've passed uh, local welcoming city ordinances, defended that in, in Chicago, but in other um, areas. We've limited uh, detention, so we've ended private detention here in Illinois, mm -hmm. um, but also also ensuring that people undocumented have access to resources of state government. We've got the Trust Act in Illinois, right, preventing yes. law enforcement from, from participating in, in immigration enforcement. You've got concerns, Lawrence, that, that Trump could withhold federal funds to force Democratic governors like J.B. Pritzker to comply with ICE or Immigration and Customs Enforcement or to rally the National Guard to assist with these deportations, right? What's on your mind? Well, I, I think, again, to get to the numbers that they're talking about, there's going to have to be uh, cooperation, but also the, the use, the weaponizing of government, um, either through leverage of withholding federal dollars um, or, yeah, enacting using uh, entities like the National Guard for, you know, mass uh, base camps to detain people and then, use the National Guard to uh, deport people. Yeah. Uh, so the, the Trump administration, if they get uh, elected again, they, they've learned from the first time around and now are, are thinking through, and we've seen in things like Project 2025, uh, details of that plan of how they would uh, weaponize government to enact some of these ideas. If you're just tuning in, this is Reset. I'm Sasha Ann Simons, and we're talking about how a Trump or a Harris presidency could impact immigrants in the Chicago area. Our panel today, Antonio Gutierrez, who's a strategic director for Organized Communities Against Deportations, Eric Rendon, who's vice president of Immigrant Justice at the Resurrection Project, and Lawrence Benito, who's executive director of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. So, a Antonio, we should be clear that being a Democrat isn't necessarily pro-immigrant, and being Republican isn't necessarily anti-immigrant. We've seen this tightening of immigration policy under President Joe Biden, right? And if you remember, President Barack Obama still holds that record for deporting the highest number of immigrants. So how do you make sense of how top Democrats are positioning themselves on the issue? Yeah, no, and, and you're completely right, right? That Obama is still the deporter-in-chief, uh, as we did many actions against them when he was president. Uh, but ultimately, I think that it comes to the point that as an undocumented person that were uh, isolated from the civic engagement or the process of voting, right, because no undocumented people is voting, those are just rhetorics that are there to divide us and to make uh, the election process invalid. Uh, but ultimately, I think that, um, yeah, that undocumented people are going to be in constantly threat as we have seen over the last like 20 like two decades regardless of who's going to be president regardless of whether it's a republic a republican or democratic administration we have seen increase of deportations the approach is different uh, but this rhetoric of the good versus bad immigrant it continues to be part of the decision making for both parties in mm -hmm. regards to immigration what do you make of that narrative that good quote unquote good immigrant right this narrative that there are certain undocumented people who deserve to stay in the U.S. and some who don't. Yeah, 
I, I think that is very complex uh, and nuanced to like put it in such simple like terms, right? That like either you're good or versus bad. Like humans are complex individuals. We come uh, with trauma. We come with different things from our countries of origin, and we experience even more trauma once we come to the United States as undocumented people. And that trauma gets projected in many different ways, right? Like if there's no resources and our people are trying to survive, they are going to use whatever resources they have in order to survive and, and feed their families. Uh, and ultimately, this versus like good versus bad like rhetoric is not fixing the system or the issues that we see with the immigration system. Obama was only deporting criminals or bad immigrants supposedly, and we made many campaigns during his terms or his administrations that were showing that that was not true, that he was deporting the grandmother that has been living here for 25 years and that because of a traffic violation, she was placed in detention for a year before she was released and we're still fighting her deportation. Mm. How is that a system that is working uh, on the contrary is is working very well for the purpose of what it was created which was to uh, again to pro to protect the white supremacist project of keeping the pure blood uh, the pure American blood that Trump talks about in, in the speech that you played as Vice President Harris has uh, was tasked with addressing uh, she was tasked with addressing the root causes of migration at a a press conference back in June 2021. She was in Guatemala on her first overseas trip. She, at that time, told would-be migrants who were coming without visas, quote, do not come, do not come. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our borders. Do not come. So you were part of the grassroots response to the first busloads of people that were coming from the southern border a couple of years ago. So your thoughts on how Harris has responded to the increased border crossings. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a incredibly difficult circumstances that folks, you know, leave. Um, my family left when I, when my dad left when I was eight months, and then we came when I was four years old. Um, and, you know, at the time, and still today, right, it's not like we were allowed to come. Um, those are the same messages. Um, we did, you know, we crossed the border, and um, we had to figure it out and survive. Um, and so I think when you're in those circumstances, um, you're either going to stay in a very difficult um, environment, potentially dangerous, potentially, I mean, m many, many times, um, you know, in very impoverished um, circumstances, or you take the risk and you come. And I think that the do not come isn't something new that we've heard. We've been hearing that forever. Yeah. Um, but it's still a decision that families make out of survival. Lawrence, in the border bill that Trump lobbied against, Democrats agreed to tough border measures, like being able to quickly expel migrants at the southern border when crossings are high. Uh, this was in exchange for some expansion of existing pathways to citizenship. At the DNC, Kamala Harris said, quote, we can create an earned pathway to citizenship and secure our border. What does that signal to you? Well... This is uh, Chicago, right? Uh, this is also the home of, you know, former President Obama. We've we've heard these words before, and you know, people are, you know, on one hand, you you hear uh, very nasty rhetoric uh, from the Republican Party, um, and then the Democrats, you know, a little bit softer, but the policies, of, you know, closing the border, and mm -hmm. if you look side by side at what the Biden administration um, has actually done, uh, the policies are pretty similar, right? And so um, it has showed how far the Democrats are willing to negotiate on on this issue of, of the border. Do we have any reason to believe that a Harris presidency would not extend TPS or DACA? What has she said on this topic? I think we can look at what the Biden administration has done, which is he has extended TPS for various countries. He has done the largest um, parole um, program in U.S. history, actually, to mm -hmm. bring in, to allow for new paths for immigrants to be able to come in. Um, A program and, that would allow spouses uh, yes, and, he and did some it, stepchildren. He, correct. He did um, authorize um, parole in place for spouses of U.S. citizens. Um, and so there has been um, some good policies to protect immigrants, to be able to have immigrants have some sort of pathway towards 
um, adjust, sorry, through towards work permits and for some folks, adjustment of status. Some of this is tied up in the court system. Um, there's DACA, which uh, Trump would do away with, which we would expect the Harris administration to continue to protect. Um, and so there is, in practicality, also very different. Um, it does feel like a very, two very different um, paths um, that we could take. Yeah. So what steps would you all want to see a Trump or a Harris administration take to protect undocumented immigrants? Briefly, we're, we're almost out of time, and, and let's go around the room here. Antonio, you first. Yeah, I think the way that we're approaching it, right, is that we're not, uh, we're not voting or selecting our savior in this next election. We're selecting a target. And in regards to target, right, if I'm thinking as a community organizer, uh, Kamala Harris is much more movable and can give us more with enough pressure and escalation during her, tr uh, her during her presidency than somebody like Trump, who for four years we were doing everything we could. We were doing more tactics than ever, uh, and we were not able to to move all, like move in uh, to give them like better protections. Yeah. And all, ultimately, right, whenever there's paths to citizenship for some, that always comes exclusion or excluding others, right? And so yeah. that is always the battle that we're fighting in regards to a democratic uh, like president. What do you want to see, Lawrence, from Trump or Harris? Sure. So, you know, right now our democracy project is uh, reaching out to over 200,000 immigrant voters, uh, most of them in the suburbs, seven suburban areas, talking to people in French, Arabic, Spanish, Chinese, and English. Nice. Um, and so the vast majority of those people want to see solutions, permanent solutions to our immigration um, issues. Uh, so not temporary fixes, but a path to legalization, um, you know, for the undocumented people in this in this country. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. And last word goes to you, Eric. Well, I don't want to see a Trump. Um, if we see a Trump presidency, I think then it's all to all of us here um, to protect as many folks as possible. And then I think if we see a Harris administration, you know, continuing to call on legalization, um, whether that be through um, Congress or that whether that be through executive actions um, that she can take and continue to protect the um, limited and small wins that we have had. We've been speaking with Ere Rendon, who's Vice President of Immigrant Justice for the Resurrection Project, Antonio Gutierrez, who's Strategic Director for Organized Communities Against Deportations, and Lawrence Benito, who's Executive Director of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Thank you all so much.